Um, your lecture today is on microbiome in functional GI diseases. Um, that means that both the brain and the gut must be involved somehow because you feel the pain and it's some, some created somewhere. So how do they talk to each other? So there's a lot of exciting new information that there's a bi-directional communication, so a two-way communication between our brain and our intestinal tract and our intestinal tract and the brain. So there is this communication between what we eat and the microbes uh, that colonize our gut and our brain function and how we feel and how we sense things like pain and discomfort. Uh, exactly how, so we know that is true. How it happens is the subject of a lot of current study. Uh, it suggests that the nervous system in our intestinal tract, the enteric nervous system, is connected to the brain and that the communication goes through nerves in both directions, as well as uh, molecules and hormones that circulate in the bloodstream can make it uh, from our uh, intestinal tract to the brain. And the immune system, how we fight off uh, infections, can also respond locally in the intestinal tract, but also communicate uh, with the brain. So there's a highway of probably at least three different uh, roads that make it a connection between top and bottom. So let's start up. The problem start up in early infancy with colleagues, as pediatricians call it. Uh, yes. uh, you mentioned that that there's a different definition of colleagues in different parts of the world. But there are studies which are very consistent now that treatment might work, right? Yes, that's right. There's a, been a lot of interest uh, in uh, studying uh, infants with irritability, so-called colic. Uh, and the exciting part is that these studies uh, from really different parts of the world show the same effect. And, and babies who are breastfed and very irritable and very fussy and uh, upsetting for their parents to see them in that kind of state, that their symptoms improve uh, much better with a probiotic compound as compared to a sugar pill. So there is hope on the horizon. It's a new treatment for uh, these little ones. And it might not only impact their acute symptoms, but there's uh, great interest in what it might do for symptoms later on in life in childhood and grown-up years. A childhood? Is there also a treatment or hope? Yeah, so for again, treatment in childhood? Yeah, again, very interesting. Uh, lots of exciting work uh, suggesting that that probably is the case. Uh, there's been some variation in which probiotic strains have been used, so it's not entirely clear. But the colic, the strain that has been used in colics in infant has been tested in children with irritable bowel syndrome, abdominal discomfort, and there's some suggestion that pain symptoms are improved. So again, hope for a new way of uh, treating symptoms in children. And uh, finally, could I do something for myself at a more mature age? Yeah, and, uh, so yes. that's also very interesting. There are uh, some studies uh, the, that suggest that that is the case, uh, a very effective treatment using probiotics, not the same strains that have been studied in infants and children, but there is a suggestion, uh, particularly uh, in studies comparing one kind of probiotic strain to another and adjusting the dose. So, uh, in fact, in one country in the world, in Canada, this has been approved by the regulators as a treatment for irritable bowel syndrome in young is adults. This, is it the mixture of probiotics or is it one strain? Yeah, so the ones that have been approved so far have been the one strain, but some people are testing mixtures as well. The scientific community has not resolved this question of what's the best strain or is there a best strain, should one use a mixture of strains? So we don't know that answer yet. It's an excellent question and it needs to be evaluated further. Okay. So we will meet quite soon for the next lecture. Thank Let's you very hope. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.